It is really important to support teachers in their ongoing professional development uh, for two reasons. People are generally happy when they feel that their professional learning is being supported. So it creates this sort of well-being and inclusivity at the school. The other reason is that the research is very clear. There is a direct impact on student learning and well-being when teacher learning is highly valued and highly supported in a school. The other thing that we have found is that there's been so much information about the teen brain and the impact of mental health and well-being on learning in the classroom. We know more. And because we know more, we have to continue educating ourselves so that we do the best we can for the students who are in the room. I'd say the biggest shift has been this balance between who you are teaching and what you are teaching. So I think over the years, the focus on what you teach, so whether that's English or history or mathematics, has always been how do you design a lesson so that students understand concepts. What we know now is it's also about who's in the room. And those students change every year. So it's a really important conversation for teachers to have with each other and to have that learning supported. The research is incorporated into the school, one, because we know that it's really important. So we value it and we provide time. So I'd say the best example I have is that teachers work in professional learning groups and they are encouraged to share research on the topics that they're interested in. So an example would be teachers are working on incorporating well-being into their lessons. So they will read research together on well-being. Uh, they will speak to each other about what those lessons are looking like. And we give a lot of time for teachers to meet and have those collaborative conversations where research then becomes included in the practice. The practice of teaching is research. So every day you are researching your own practice. You're in a classroom, you have students in front of you, you're observing, you tweak that lesson. I don't know of a teacher that goes into a classroom with a perfect lesson plan that nothing changes because you adapt as you're going. That, that's research, that's what teacher research looks like. In a formal sense, uh, we have a group of teachers, we have 11 this year, who are working on professional inquiry as a part of their growth model. And those are what are formally called action research projects, and we're so proud of that. At the heart of coaching, I would say there are three things that define coaching, no matter what discipline of coaching that, that you've taken. One is it's listening. So rather going, going into a conversation with a presumed sort of end goal, so take a teacher's professional growth, you actually are curious and you ask more questions and you listen to what that person is saying. What are they hoping for? What are they seeing in their classroom? Uh, what experience do they have where things went really well and how can we build on that? That's one aspect of coaching. The other one is helping the person come up with solutions because, again, research is clear that in a community, if somebody defines an action, they are really more likely to actually do it if they have come up with that action. So that's another aspect of coaching is to come up with um, an action or solution that the person identifies. And the third part is, is to honor that within the culture. So it's okay to say you're having those conversations, but where do you actually practice it? So within our professional growth model, we're very intentional about coaching practices. Teachers then do that with students. So it just brings us back to this point of research and developing practices that the direct impact is on our students. So teachers now have coaching conversations with students. And I think that's a profound impact on our classroom community. Every day there are examples of teachers mentoring other teachers and sharing practices. We also have a formal mentor program, which I strongly um, support, and I'm so happy that we have that within the school. It is not something that happens in every school. So we have teachers who are identified as mentors. They do receive training in that area, and they work with teachers who are new to teaching at Greenwood. They may be new to teaching, and many come to the school with experiences from other schools, and we want to value that and support it and make it part of our community. Innovation is what Greenwood was built on. It's just a part of what we do here. So trying things in the classroom, um, reading an educational article that says, oh, this is a way to group students and have them learn together. We have a culture in the school of trying that. We also have a culture of technology in the school, of being very much in the, the foreground and one of the first schools in Toronto to look at things like blended learning in the classroom. 
But in terms of innovation in teaching right now, I'd say that happens in different areas in the school that all become very connected together. So one, I will start with our innovation lab. And it is for students and student learning. That group offers training for teachers and an opportunity for teachers to learn about innovation and design and what that looks like, that they can bring those practices into their classroom as well. All the innovation doesn't have to happen in the innovation lab, but it is a place for those ideas um, and a design for creating that in a classroom to happen. We have tech integrators at the school that have been so helpful this year in terms of how do you build technology into your lesson in a way that moves students forward that they're thinking in an innovative way and you're adapting your teaching. The other thing we know about innovation though is that it's actually not all about technology. It's also a mindset that you have that you're willing to try something with intention. I'm hoping for something. I am going to try this and be practice and it might not work out. But I can have that discussion with my colleagues and I will try again, or maybe they'll have another idea. That's that, again, speaking of that piece of culture, that's where innovation happens within a school. You want people bringing research into the school. Every professional in the school, every staff member in the school owns bringing what they've learned into the school community. So a part of professional learning in a school community, and again, the research speaks to this, is that people go out. So you go out and you bring back in. And that professional learning happens in two ways. One, you can have a professional collaboration with other people in other schools and other organizations. We have many teachers who are part of committees and learning groups with teachers from other schools. Um, I myself am part of the Canadian Centre for Brief Coaching and do some work with the Ontario Institute for Studies and Education at U of T. And those are professional collaborations and are hugely helpful in bringing new information to the school. Our teachers are really supported, um, both in terms of encouraged to do it and supported in terms of financially, of continuing their education in an area that will benefit the students in the school. And so taking your master's program, uh, additional certification, additional qualifications, those are highly encouraged and benefit the school. I think when I reflect on all the learning and teacher learning that is happening at Greenwood, uh, I come back to the idea of story. So I'm a believer in the importance of the story of a school. I'm a huge believer in listening to the stories of teachers, what they have learned, what this means to them, and the passion they bring to the school. And the one way to really find out about how much teaching is loved and cared for at Greenwood is to hear it from the stories of teachers. What you mean to teaching music is my love of performance. I love playing music. Kevin and I are both still an active performers in the Toronto community. And I, I love being able to kind of provide those opportunities for kids, so whether it's school plays or the choirs and bands or just some more unique experiences. Uh, I've had it really rewarding to be able to kind of cultivate those experiences and, and then see what students are able to get out of it. What drew me to teaching music was that I grew up in a really musical family. And my dad from a young age was always playing music around the house. In addition to that, I always just really related very well to my music teachers and sort of the collaboration and the, the community that was built around that was always a really special part of my life growing up. And so I wanted to kind of share that with other people. One of the things that I think is really unique about teaching these to young people is the opportunity to make connections. And I think specifically at an age where you're really looking to kind of build connections with people, it can do a really unique sort of profound way to communicate and a way to sort of uniquely express yourself. I really like teaching music to young people because it's an opportunity to get them to try something completely new. And it's such a wonderful privilege to be able to hand someone like a trumpet for the first time and get them buzzing their lips. Evan and I are both privileged to be able to teach these kids in grade seven. And if things kind of go well for both parties, you teach them until they're in grade 12. To be able to be there at the beginning and then also help them with their auditions and, and do every step of the way, it's just really rewarding. Technology has been a really interesting uh, addition to how we taught music. When I first started, I taught in a fairly traditional, straight ahead concert band way where we had our instruments and we learned to read notes. And I found some ways to use technology to really augment that program. I think it's very important to me that music literacy is still 
kind of central to what we do. Some interesting ways in which that I've, I've been able to incorporate technology into it uh, has been with multi-track recording. I think particularly in the local program uh, to set kids up with some USB microphones and some multi-track recording software uh, is a really unique way to take music from being something that just happens in the moment and is gone and to have it be something that can go with them and it can go home to parents and go to the wider community and be something that students are really proud of. When you record yourself and you listen back to it, it becomes so immediately evident what you've done wrong and what you need to fix. And so using recordings in that way to allow you to analyze and reflect upon your own work um, and your own growth and what sort of where you're headed is really important and really valuable, I think. Teaching music is one of the most exciting things. I just love it so much. And I feel like being able to share that with other people is one of the greatest privileges of my life.